Hey, what's good, everybody? I know, it's been a while. Videos haven't been up to date. Uh, I tried to get some out for you every day for the last week. I've been in Florida. Uh, I went to Disney World with the girlfriend and uh, her family. It was a great time. It was a great time. Saw Winnie the Pooh. Day was made. Anyway, we're back with some videos, guys. I missed a ton. I missed quite possibly the greatest content update we've ever had. And then we'll be able to show at least the best one, I think, this year. So... What was it? Well, it was Team Affinity 5 and a collection reward featuring two players that we've been waiting to see for a fat minute. Now, let's get right into it. We're going to review all the TA5 cards that dropped. I'm not going to do a top whatever, top 5, top 10, because they're so good this time around. It's going to be tough to do that. I can still do it, but I want to do it a little different this time. I'm going to grade them, letter grade, A through F, A minus is included, all that stuff. It's going to be a little bit more specific. It's going to be more um in depth i suppose um and there'll be some hot takes but we're gonna hop right into it. let's get into nl east we'll start with them the nl we'll start with the east nl east first let's get right into it first up let's get it what we got freddie freeman this is freddie freeman finest for mlb to show 21 my man first of all card art great job guys at sds excellent job love the card art excuse me always when i'm recording these videos all right, what do we got? 124, 115 versus righties at parallel one. I've been using them a little bit, so minus one on all of the stats. All right, guys, give me a break. 124, 115, 109, 108 versus lefties with what I'm working with now. So what do I see at first? Versus righties, killer, obviously. Versus lefties, very solid. The best Freddie Freeman versus lefties. Best Freddie Freeman card versus lefties that we've ever, ever... Oh, that's nice to see that, that buy order go through. Best Freddie Freeman hitting versus lefties we've ever seen. It's very nice to see. I love it. Very, very usable. Now, fielding. It's there. 87 fielding. He's a diamond at parallel four. Uh, at first base with great reaction. A very solid arm, which is interesting. He also plays third base. Very cool. I love that he plays third base. 57 speed goes over 60 at parallel five. I'm going to give this card an A. Shocker, right? Why am I going to give it an A for the quirks? Let's go look at the quirks. He's got active quirks. He's got homebody. Performs better when playing at home. Day player. Everyone plays mostly day games. If you do, most people do. It's very good. Play day, day, it's very, very good to play day games. Very, very good. First pitch hitter. Unfazed. Dead red, which is one of the best quirks in the game. Excels at hitting fastballs. He's got breaking ball hitter, too. Excels at hitting breaking balls. So he can't get beat by anything. Rally monkey. Better when the team's losing. Fighter. Performs better in the ninth inning or later, so he's clutch as hell. And situational letter. Excels at driving in a run from third with less than two outs. So he's got the clutch gene, man. Wow. So, this card is, has unbelievable amount of quirks and a great swing. We know he's got a great swing. I got to give this card an A for that. Other than that, he probably would be an A. Uh, probably be a B plus if he didn't have those quirks. Because we got Lou Gehrig and now Babe Ruth and all these guys. So, um, you know, whatever it may be. Freddie Freeman, demon. Love the card. Next up, Sandy Alcantara. One thing we'll, know, we'll notice about these pitchers, guys, from the TA5 drop. The hits per nine was lowered through acro across the board for starting pitchers. Relief pitchers a little different story. But starters, it was lowered. This seems to be a concerned and stra strategical effort from SDS's part since last TA, to be honest, with the legends, of lowering everyone's hits per nine when these big content drops, trying to fool people into using less um, pitchers with lesser hits per nine to try and make it easier for people to hit. If you notice the hitters are getting juiced, pitchers are getting taken back a little bit with starting pitchers. I believe they recognize their mistake with dropping cards like Outlighter in May and these all these no-hitter cards being so overpowered. They're trying to mix in a bunch of cards to kind of fool people into using these guys in ranked to make it a little bit easier to hit because... How difficult it is to hit in the MLB The Show 21 this year is one of the reasons why people stop playing online. Anyway, to the card. 120 stamina. That doesn't matter. We know stamina is busted. Anyways, 104 hits per nine. Not particularly great. We're talking 109 maxed out. That's not really that great. That's tops now-ish. Um, we're in the Pedro territory. 101k per nine. It's whatever. You know, you think with the lower hits per nine, you have a higher K per nine. It's just kind of a little bit too even. I'm not a huge fan of that. 104 BB per nine. That's fan That's phenomenal. So the control is there. 79 home run per nine. That's an offline stat. Doesn't matter. 78 pitch and clutch. Interesting. So guys on base doesn't do so well. 94 control with a 101 with a 104 BB per nine combo. Fantastic. He's got the control. 99 velo and break. And fun fact, he's got sinker slider, change up four seam and curveball with outlier on the sinker. So he does have outlier sinker. Um, Obviously, people will tell you that this card isn't that, you know, it looks crazy. He's got all these glowing bars uh, above hundreds for all this stuff. Look, the only difference between this card and Edward Cabrera is his stamina rating. <laughs> Let's be honest here. That's really it. And a couple other things here and there. But overall, with Pinpoint this year, they're pretty similar. 
Uh, Outlier helps Sandy out a little bit. Um, if you look at the controls in the top right, they're very good on this pitch. You take out the brakes, insane too as well. I'm gonna give Sandy. I'm gonna give Sandy a B minus. Um, I, I like the card. He gets a B minus. Uh, the outliers think it really carries here. Plus the slider combo, the one two punch. I'll give it to him. But I think he's kind of easy to read. Um, I don't think he's gonna give you much trouble. The, the PCI is gonna be a little bit too big for us. So man, we're getting used to guys like you know, Verlander and Felix and Degrom who have 125s. Yeah, Kluber, same thing. It's it's not gonna be 104. Is such a drastic difference. That's an enormous PCI size difference. If you go, if you're seeing Verlander two games in a row and you're, you're figuring him out, and then you see Sandy Alcantara, you're gonna light this card up, man. His PCI is gonna look like a balloon. But uh, B minus overall, not a bad card. Pretty fun. Marcus Stroman, Mets finest, uh, the worst finest the Mets got. They got three. Um, the worst one is this one, uh, unfortunately. But that means the other two are really good because Stroman is uh, Stroman's pretty awful. What do we got? 110 stamina. Mm, okay. 103 hits per nine. That's pretty bad. That's lower than Sandy. He doesn't throw hard either, Stroman. Only 86 velocity. 99K per nine. He ain't missing any barrels, guys. He's a contact pitcher. 104 BB per nine. So he's got the control. Uh, 83 pitcher clutch, whatever. 96 control to go along with that 104 BB per nine. So both of those numbers will be over 100 after a few parallels. Stroman's got the control. 86 velocity. Not awful. Um, if he had a high hits per nine, it wouldn't matter. But he doesn't, unfortunately. 99 break. This card is just like a poopy Felix. If you think about it. But look at the controls on his pitches. Very solid all the way through. Brakes are solid as well. Uh, Stroman can field a little bit too. 68 fielding. It should be higher in my opinion. But he can hit a little bit too. He should be faster. It's just a fun fact. Not a great card. Going to be honest, guys. He's going to get shelled. He will not miss any barrels. Uh, low hits per nine. Big PCI versus card. Doesn't throw very hard. It'll be easy to time him up, unfortunately. Cool. I love Stroman. He did great this year. But unfortunately, he's not going to be a top five pitcher, you know, for finest. Pretty obvious. Zach Wheeler for the Phillies. Mets legend. Zach Wheeler, who was a Cy Young candidate, gets 108 hits per nine. Now, is that doable? Yes, because we're looking at 113 when maxed out. He also has 105K per nine. It's a good tandem combo here. Both get over 110. I love to see that. The stamina is 125 because of how many innings he threw. He did great this year. Fantastic. That's great. Doesn't matter. We know how stamina works. Control is a 93 to go along with a 106 BB per nine. That guy is going to be locking it up with the control. 99 velo and break. And the fun fact about Zach Wheeler, my man got outlier on the sinker. Outlier two. I don't think that helps. I, I like Outlier 1, and that's it. I think the whole thing, the reason why a sinker is good is because it's a lot slower than the fastball, but it's got a high break percentage, high break rating, so it splits. It looks a lot different than the fastball, and it moves a lot. It can't move as much if it's got Outlier on it. It doesn't have enough time to move. That's just the way it is, but the controls are nuts on this guy. The brakes are even crazier. Um, the sinker gets up to 100. We know this. He can hit a little bit, too. We can see that. He can get to a bronze fielder at parallel 5. Fun fact. Um, he's not the same speed as Stroman. That's such an oversight. <laughs> Anyways, outlier two, as you see, he's got home body too. So as a home pitcher, you'll be doing better. That's an interesting quirk to note. Um, very solid card. I think he's a, he's, a, he's very usable if you max him up. I still think he's a little bit readable personally. Um, I wouldn't use this guy. I don't think he's anywhere close to top five third starting pitcher in the game. But if you like Zach Wheeler, he was a Cy Young. He was top top option for Cy Young this year. Scoop him up. I think he's a super 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 solid card. Oh, I forgot to rate Stroman. Oh my goodness, Stroman. If Sandy's a B minus, Strowman gets a C. Just gets a C. He gets a C because of sinker cutter mix. That's it. Everything else is not that great. I give him a C. Zach Wheeler. What does Zach Wheeler get? Zach Wheeler to me gets a B plus. Outlier on the sinker too. Could be good or bad. I don't think it's good. Some people might think it's good. I don't think it's good. Um, but the pitch mix, the sinker, um, high up on the on you know in his in his pitch arsenal, the good hits per nine relative to other cards. W B plus card. I M O. Now big daddy Juan Soto. Finest. We've been waiting for this card. Let's hop right in. Let's see what he's got. 125, 118 versus righties right now with the plus ones. 116, 112 versus lefties. Elite. We got a Juan Soto with 120 plus contacts on both sides after parallel five. Uh, he gets over 120 power against righties after two more parallel levels for me. He's also an insanely good defender this year because he deserves it. He played really well out there. Uh, we get a, a pretty decently high rated diamond defender Soto with an insane reaction rating of 94 right now. It starts at 93. 59 speed at parallel one, so he's 58 to start. He gets above 60 speed. He gets high 90s reaction with a diamond defense in right field. I absolutely love this card. Now, I think it's the best hitter in the entire one of the best hitters in the entire game, obviously, from the numbers. But if we dip into the quirks, we'll see the active quirks he has. He's got Road Warrior. Performs better when playing on the road. Day player. Very important quirk. First pitch hitter. Big PC on the first pitch. Unfazed. Excels when hitting with two strikes. Dead Red. Excels at hitting fastballs. Breaking ball hitter. Excels at hitting breaking balls. He's got Dead Red and breaking ball hitter. He's got Rally Monkey. Performs better when the team's losing. He's got Fighter. He's got all the quirks you need. If he had... Oh, what's one quirk he could be? He, he could use right now? If I mean, honestly... If he had 
pinch hitter, he'd be the ultimate, like, penultimate car. But at the same time, he has everything you need, man. Um, homebody would be sick. But other than that, this card is unbelievable. All those quirks factored in. I give Juan Soto an A+. Plus. He gets an A+. Plus. Balanced hitting. Great defense. The speed's a little bit whatever. But the quirks and the swing all make up for it. He gets an A+. Plus for me. I absolutely love this card. He's fantastic. Definitely a must cop. You got you to pick this guy up. Definitely has somewhere a spot on your team. Now, that's the East. That's the NL East. Let's hop into the AL East. Let's get into it. Uh, first one up, Ryan Mountcastle. Great year for the uh, Baltimore Orioles. 102, 102, 110 contact, 115, 119 power. Power's there. Contact versus lefties is there, right? He's a little bit weak. Defense is kind of whack, um, but he's got decent reaction. First baseman, uh, but he plays third and left too. Um, 76 speed. Now he can run a little bit. Quirks, he's got breaking ball hitter and road warrior, which are cool. Um, Factoring all the cards that are out, are out there right now in the game to use at first base, third base, or left field. His numbers versus righties being weaker in a meta where it's righties dominant. Uh, and the swing's okay. He gets a C+. Plus. Nah, he gets a C. He gets a C. No real use on the team, man, honestly. He's a cool card and he's usable, which is great. But he gets a C from me, just sort of middle of the pack. Next up, JD Martinez. People wanted a doogie. They didn't get Verdugo, but they got JD. 114, 115 contacts, 111, 108 power. He's about like the Super Mario of baseball, man. He's just really well balanced. Um, Not much to say here about his offense, guys. We know his offense is good. It's very well balanced. He's got everything you need on the offensive end. He's, he's right there. 77 fielding in left field for JD is a blessing. With a 79 reaction to 51 speed. We're looking at a gold fielding JD Martinez with parallel system and decent speed. He's just there. You know, he's there. What does he got active quirk wise? He's got situational hitter. That's about it. JD, bottom. I, I give him a C plus. He's got great offensive numbers, and if you're really good with him, his swing is good. He can be a good pinch hitter for you, but just really no place, uh, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't, rel relative value. It's all relative value, guys, so he gets a C-plus from me. Garrett Cole, guy who finished essentially runner-up with the Cy Young voting. It's 104 hits per nine, 105K per nine. That's not particularly great. 105 BB per nine, which is great. 93 control, which is really solid, and a 122 clutch, super cool. Um, hits per nine is, is low. Same, same as Sandy Alcantara, which is crazy to me. Uh, they gave him a sinker. Look at his controls. They're very solid. Look at the break. Same thing as well. They gave him a sinker, which is super helpful. He's got a decent pitch mix. He's better than years before, but his readable windup with the low hits per nine combo is going to be a detriment to him. I give him a C plus. Um, for the, I, give him a, I give him a C plus. I really do. Um, unfortunately, I think the sinker really helps him out here. I think he's slightly better than Stroman because of the velocity. I think that's the reason that I can help him out here a little bit. Um, plus the higher hits per nine and a higher K per nine. He might miss a little bit more barrels than you would think. But um, other than that, no real value. Quirks, he's got uh, home body and night player. So active quirks there. I think those are offensive quirks too, I, don't, I think, as, as far as I'm aware. But either way, um, C plus, not not great. B better Garrett Cole than last year's finest, but still all the same. It's Garrett Cole. Brandon Lau, one of the greatest swings we've seen in MLB The Show, at least in my opinion. Finally got a card with well-balanced contact. 107, 125 versus righties. He's a righty killer. Oh, we're talking over 110 contact versus righties with the parallel system. I love him. 100, 114 versus lefties. More than doable if you can hit with this guy's swing. 85 field, they had second base with a 92 arm and an 88 reaction. 67 speed to start. Get him up a little above 70. He could play left field with a hose piece. He's got an absolute cannon of an arm. That's a very unbelievable, you know, uh, for me. I've never really knew him as much of a defender, but apparently he's crazy. I guess I'm an idiot. Actually, I think he was finishing for the goal. He was in the top running for goal glove. I'm bugging. Anyways. We love this guy's swing. He's nuts. Quirks. Important here. He's got home body, day player, first pitch hitter, unfazed, and rally monkey. So very good card. I love Brandon Lau. I think he's a sleeper. I really do. I think Brandon Lau for me. But you're factoring in the lower contacts and the positions available. I'm going to give him a straight up B. I'm going to give him a B. I love the card. I think he's super underrated. Give him a shot. I love his swing. He'll make it in there. I'm thinking about doing an A team for our team, our finest uh, team build video. An A team and a B team. Two different videos. I'm thinking about it. And he'll be on the B team most likely. But... Speaking of B team, he gets a B rating. Now, Marcus Simeon. Um, Silver Slugger. <laughs> one of the best hitters in the league this year for the AL. One of the best sluggers. Had an unbelievable year. 108, 105 contacts. They're not particularly great, but they're not bad either. They're very good. Both over 110, at least 110 when, with the parallel system. He's got 123 power versus right. That's very good. 112 versus lefty. So he's got the pop. Great swing. Um, so he's pretty, he's pretty solid. He's very solid for a second baseman. He's very solid. 92 fielding. That's elite. He's diamond everywhere at parallel three where he plays third and shortstop as well. His arms a little bit weaker, 72 arms. So he's probably relegated to second and third base. In my opinion, high reaction, 84 speed, go to quirks. He's got, un uh, he's got no active quirks, actually no active quirks. 
Great swing. I think what hurts Simeon in relative terms, in terms of relative value is the fact that guys like Cattell Marte and Jorge Polanco are switch hitters who could play second base. Polanco, especially because he's also a second baseman, but guys like Cattell Marte, Corey Seager, guys who aren't short or aren't second basemen but can play second base with insane offensive value. They kind of hurt this guy Simeon's value because for a second baseman to have these kind of offensive numbers and defensive numbers, it's very, very, very unheard of. But secondary positions allowing guys like Seager and Cattell to play there will give you great value, Honus Wagner, stuff like that. Um, that's what hurts his relative value. But overall, this card is really, really good. I give him a B plus. Uh, I think is um, what hurts him a little bit here uh, takes away from you know potentially an A, the arm, whatever. But it's mostly the contacts. If you're asking me, but other than that, he's super, super good. And the lack of an active quirk, I think, is really important because a lot of these guys have quirks that are really game breaking. Um, but overall, B plus, very solid card. I love the Simeon. Now on to the central. We'll go AL Central, we'll bounce right over and we'll go right back down. A little snake job. Emmanuel Classe, 122 hits per nine as a closing pitcher. Damn, that's high. 102K per nine. So a, lot of, a couple, little more foul balls than you think, but he's got 105 BB per nine, 92 control, 99 velo and break with outlier on the cutter. Look at the control on the cutter. He's got 99 control and break on the cutter with outlier on it he's got good stamina active quirk is outlier one we know that now um things i'll note i've heard from people that i know trusted sources that this card gets shelled online because of no out pitches versus lefties so everything everything moves the same way into a lefty or straight down the middle that's really it no two seam no sinker you know you need them so maybe even a circle change would help them out here but nonetheless everything we have to work with here i gotta give this card i'm gonna give this card an a minus a minus rating is a little bit hard to hit too. I'm gonna give him an A minus initially. I think it might be more like a B plus, but I don't want to get the I don't want to get the dogs on me. I'll give him an A minus. Very good good card. Indians fans have been waiting for this card. Guardians, whatever. People have been waiting for this guy. Good stuff. Moncada. I don't know how this man landed a white. He landed a finest for the White Sox, but he did. 106, 107 contacts. Not great, but good. 100 powers. Just good. With the switch hitter ability and that swing that people like a lot, that makes it a lot better. 87 fielding at third base, 93 arm, 90 reaction, 71 speed. He's got a hose. He plays third, first, and second, which is incredible. So this guy's got a lot of versatility, man. A lot of a guy who's a really solid third baseman, second baseman, and he could play a corner too at first base. Unreal. Quirks, important. He's got night player and dead red. Very good quirks. Dead red's a very good quirk. Uh, Mancata kind of slid through the cracks here. I think the switch hitters, Cattell and Polanco, are better than him right now, personally speaking. Um because of swings and all that stuff but then again Mancata looks pretty similar to Polanco I don't know it's tough it's very tough I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Mancata a B plus um I'll give him a B I'm gonna give him a B the low contacts and the mid the mid powers kind of hurt him but I think he's gonna play a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for it people are sleeping on him a little bit I like that guy dead red helps a lot too so I like Mancata I'm gonna give him a B next up Heimer Candelario somehow he snuck away with a finest over um Kiel Badu it's all good 107 112 contacts which are pretty solid, man. They're very solid. 101, 100 powers. So he's a better all-around offensive player than Yoan Mancada. Interesting. 84 fielding at third base. Very solid. 88 reaction, too, with an 84 arm. He's got a good arm accuracy. 61 speed, so he can run a little bit, too. He plays third and first. I like Candelario swing. Heimer, Big J's back. I think the card's pretty decent. Um, I think Mancada gets a better grade than him, though, overall, because of the position ability to play second base. That's huge. Big power position. Um, a uh, big position, a big, uh, you know, weakness of that position for power plays like Mankata. So the fact that Mankata can play that helps him out. But Heimer, Road Warrior, Day Player, first pitch hitter, Dead Red, and Rally Monkey. Um, you know what? I'm gonna give him the same rating. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give him a, you know what? I'm gonna give him a, you know, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him a B. It's a close B. It should be a B plus. The quirks are really good. But there's guys out there already with better value overall. But I still really like this Jay. You know, Jay Candelario, don't sleep on him. My man Jay, don't sleep on him. Big Jay's got it. He's got it made. Don't sleep. Try him out. I like the card. Next up, Salvi Perez. We finally got him. Big 99 overall Salvi. 105, 119 versus righties. Demon. 120 versus 120, 125 versus lefties. Killer of lefties. Obviously, he's a max, max guy. Um, Guys, what can we say? We're talking about a high contact. Salvi, uh, parallel five is 110, 120 contact, 125 contacts. He's got over, he's going to have almost max power. 85 fielding. He had one of the worst defensive years of his career and he got 85 fielding. So he'll be a diamond after some parallels. Arms at 85 gets to 92, 43 speed. He blows Posey out the water for a lot of reasons. One of them being the fact that my man has homebody. 
Night player and dead red. Big quirk to have. I think Salvi gets an A minus in my opinion. Killers for him. Um, no, you know what? Salvi gets an A for me, man. He really does. Salvi, if you can hit with this, Salvi gets an A. I think he's a fat A. Parallel five. This card is incredible. Um, and yeah, he gets an A for me. Now, Jorge Polanco, one of my favorites. He's parallel one. Ignore him. Ignore him. 107, 113 contacts uh, at parallel one. 118, 110 powers. This is why I think he's better than Mankata. He can play second base. I think he's why he's better than Simeon. He's got the well-balanced offensive numbers with a fantastic swing and a switch hitter ability. 81 fielding, 81 arm, 82 reaction at second base. Very good. More than good enough. He plays third and short too, which is huge. 75 speed so he can run a little bit. And he's got unfazed, which is a pretty good quirk. Excels when hitting with two strikes. Um, I love Polanco. I think he's one of the best cards in the drop. I'm hitting 720 with him versus the computer with 10 bombs. I know it's just a CPU, but still, just comfortability. You get to figure out these guys. 125 clutch rating, by the way. I love this card. I think a must try. 100% of use this top snout card. You know, if you know, you know. Uh, he had a great year for the Twins. Definitely try him out. For me, Polanco gets an A minus rating. I think Polanco gets A minus for the first utility, for the swing, and for all around numbers. He gets an A minus. I love the card. I think he's very good. Now on to the NL Central, guys. Uh, where am I going? Why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I going down there? Uh, NL Central, Patty Wisdom. Patty Wisdom's got the max power. That's incredible. 100, 104 contacts. Not particularly great for selecties. He's decent. Uh, 92 fielding at third base. Wow, he's got the defense. 94 reactions, 76 speed. He plays first, left, and right, too. He plays the corner infield and corner outfield with that defense and gets over 80 speed. We're looking at one of the better defenders in, in the entire drop. Versatility-wise, he's very solid. If you're a Hall of Famer below player, this guy will have no issues with those contact numbers. Even on Legend, he'll be just fine with that swing. He's got... I think he's a really solid card. If you look at his quirks, he's got no active quirks, though. So that combined with low contacts and playing a position that's already dense as it is between third, first, left, and right. I'm going to give Patty Wisdom a... I'm going to give him a B-. minus. Now I'm going to give him a C+. Plus. C+, because plus of his, his, his just... You know, there's a it's a dense position, dense options. You need to be really a killer to make it a third first in the corner outfields. If I'm being honest, that's how it is. That's how it is. That's how it be. Any personal, I like Patty. I think you can get you can get away with him, but just think the relative value gets him down to a C plus. Next up, Jonathan India, great rookie of the year. 104, 119 contact, so he's way better versus lefties. 105, 101 power, so he's a little more power against righties, a little less versus lefties, but he's got a lefty contact. It's there. I has a, he has a great swing by the way. I've used this guy's great swing. Um. Plays second base with decent defense, 83 fielding, 81 reaction, 82 speeds. So we could run a little bit, but he's got 54 base running aggressiveness. Um, so his, he doesn't cut the bases very well. It's a very important value, uh, stat, guys. Check it out. If you see a guy who's got good speed, but for some reason it feels like he can't get around the bases that well or he can't stretch out doubles as easy as you might think, check that out. It's the difference between guys like Brandon Nimmo, who's got 89 speed, but like a 30 base running aggressiveness. So he can't really get the second base as fast as guys who have like McMookie, who are 85 speed, but have insanely high stealing and, and base running aggressiveness. So he Mookie cuts the bags a little bit better and is overall faster from home to second than Brandon Nemo would be because of that. Anyway, um, what do I rate Jonathan India? Well, the problem is he's got decent offense and decent defense with decent speed. He's just decent everywhere around. Usable, which is obviously fantastic, but he's just decent. His utility helps him out a little bit. Um, no active quirks too. I'm going to give him a C-. Um, I'm going to give him a C-. I am going to give him a i do not want to give anyone really below a C. If I'm being honest with you, I don't think anyone really is below a C, but he gets a C minus uh, because there's just way better options. Like Simeon should have blows this guy out the water, and they're both free. The same, so it's just no no choice. Said Corbin Burns, the best pitcher in the entire program, in my opinion. Cy Young Award winner. He's parallel one, so obviously minus one from everything else except for Velo and Break, which already start at 99. 115 hits per nine now, 113K per nine, 108 BB per nine. That's all great. Very good, very usable. 94 control. Amazing. 99 below and break. They swapped the sinker and cutter from the monthly awards card. Now it's cutter sinker. His cutter is 96. You do notice that 96 sinker is 95. So it's slower than the cutter like the other card, but they give him outlier two. So Corbin has outlier two. He's got outline the sinker. The sinker now goes up to 101 miles per hour. 102. I used it. I think it's 101 actually. Um, so now that difference between the sinker and the cutter is there. The cutter is no longer faster. That's great. You want that. Cutter is now a great, great, predominantly off pitch. Curveball, change up, slider. Uh, look at the controls on his pitches. The cutter's got 99, so is the curveball. Change up and slider up there. The sinker's, interestingly enough, the lowest controlled pitch. You look at the break. It's all 88 control and break on the sinker, but the cutter's break isn't that great either. His best pitches seem to be the curveball. His third pitch is 99 control and break. Slider even 90, 99. Change up two, same deal. Um, but Corbin Burns has outlier two. He uh, also has day player and stopper and homebody. I'm not sure what those really do for pitchers. Um, stopper, I know. I'm not sure what homebody and day player look like for pitchers, but... 
Corbin Burns, must have. You know him from earlier in the year. If you played the game since launch, the monthly awards club is great. This one's good too. Very, very good too. So scoop him up. I give Corbin Burns an A plus rating. Corbin Burns gets an A plus rating. He's a top pitcher in the program. He deserves it. Brian Reynolds. My biggest pick for sleeper of the entire program. I think he is better than Mickey Mantle. I'll tell you why. 117, 124 contacts, 110, 104 powers. With 98 fielding, 82 arm, 99 reaction, and 87 speed. Now, it's all plus ones because I got a parallel one. Whatever. With primary center field. We're talking to Brian Reynolds with 99 reaction. Over 90 speed when getting parallels up. 99 fielding, mid 80s arm, switch hitter, fantastic swing. Almost max contacts versus both sides. Power is great. He's got great powers versus both sides, especially versus righties. Why is he better than Mantle? Essentially does the same thing. Obviously, Mantle's got better numbers all across the board. Why is Brian Reynolds better? Gives you the same value as Mickey does, essentially. Much better swing. People having issues hitting with Mickey this year. I am too. I think Mickey swings a little bit slower on the inside corner than it, than, you know, it should be. I think it's just this, the way his swing works, Mickey. I think this year has a lot of problems with randomly like fouling off inside pitches that you squared up and they just like foul ball home runs and just just earlies or goods going foul. Mickey has a lot of them happen to him because his swing's kind of clunky inside. B has a great swing, super fast. I love Reynolds. I'm a big, big Brian Reynolds guy. No active quirks, unfortunately, but try him out, guys. His swing's amazing. The defense is nuts. He's a high diamond fielder in left and right as well. If you want to play him out of his position, definitely a must try at least from the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. I give this card an A+. Plus. I love him. I think he's fantastic. Paul Goldschmidt. 109. 106 versus righties. Not bad. Actually quite good. The parallel system, he gets over 110, both those benchmarks. 125, 117 versus lefties. Obviously lefty killer. 88 fielding. Gets over diamond. Uh, the arm's weak, but whatever. 94 reaction, 50, 48 speed. So he, he's actually a lot slower than I thought. Um, I feel like Goldschmidt's definitely faster than 48 speed. That seemed like a little bit of underrating, um, but... He has 77 base running aggressive this week. Run a little bit. This is where you win a lot with Paul Goldschmidt. My man has home body, day player, unfazed, rally monkey, and dead red. Some of the best quirks in the game. He's got them. Great platoon with Freddie Freeman. If you want to do that, I think Paulie should be at least on your bench if you want to try this card out. He's a very effective bench bat. Fantastic swing. Uh, I give Paul Goldschmidt, based on everything we're looking at right here, a solid B+. Plus. The quirks really help him out here. I think him being weak versus righties, though, unfortunately, as a right-handed hitter and a righty-heavy starting pitcher meta will take away from you. Um, and the speed's a little bit slower. First base is a very, very tough position right now. We got guys like Lou and Babe and Freddie now all of a sudden. We got a lot of guys that are cracked. So you got to be really good to make it there for relative value ratings. So, But Paulie, very good. Goldschmidt looking very solid. Um, I dig the card. Like I said, B+. Plus. Now, got the NL Central done. Last two, AOS to NOS, because this video is long, long. Kyle Tucker. Now, 121, 118 contacts, obviously with plus ones. 113, 121 power. That is bananas. What a fantastic swing. 92 defense at right field. Conflicts with Soto's position, but it's all good. 82 arm, 96 reaction, 69 speed. His defense and his speed play like a left fielder. Unfortunately, he's a right fielder. Weaker arm, slower. It's fine. He's got insane offensive numbers. One of the best swings in the game. Very solid. He used to be, he was like an 80 something speed last year. They, they dropped him down to like a 69. So unfortunately, his speed's a little bit slow. He gets over 70, which isn't awful. But here are the quirks Night Player, Dead Red, and Fighter. He's got Dead Red. Very good card for that reason. He's, he's a killer. I think that the speed um, takes away from him being uh, a solid A. The speed kind of kills him. I think it with if you're assuming parallel five here, you do everything you can with the quirks and his offense, his swing. I'm going to give Kyle Tucker. I'm going to give him an A minus. I'm going to give him an A minus. Uh, I think that the defense rating is, is high despite the low speed. I think the offense numbers are crazy. Those powers are ridiculous. Didn't think he'd get that high of power. Um, and the dead red quirk. And uh, Night Player and Fighter really helped him out a lot, too. So he's going to get an A minus. Very solid card. Rysel Iglesias for the Angels. 112, 114 uh, hits and K per nine. Very solid for a reliever. Uh, 112 BB per nine. That's unbelievably good. 94 control. Fantastic. 124 pitch and clutch. 99 velocity and break. Does not have outlier, though. Um, but look at his controls on his pitches. Insanely good. Break, same deal. And he's got a sinker. Um, it's his weakest pitch, but it's nice to have that there. Uh, good stamina, funky little windup. I think that combined with 
his pitch mix combined with his numbers combined with his potential with the stamina and you know parallel system i gotta give rice to iglesias i'm gonna give him a b plus i think he's gonna be pretty solid i think he's gonna be a solid pitcher maybe a b i'll give him a b he has an outlier i'll give him a b outlier would have given him a b plus but he gets a b without it i think quite solid frankie monza's got outlier on his sinker i don't know why they should be throwing that around for no reason um not a lot of break on his best pitch, which is funny to me. 103 hits per nine and K per nine. That's not great. 101 BB per nine. Mm. 95 control, which is solid. 99 velocity and break with outlier. Sandy blows him out the water. Sandy does everything this guy does, but better. Uh, oh, stretch the back out. Sandy's got better, um, better attributes, a better pitch mix. Just offers things a little bit better, I think, overall than Frankie. Frankie has outlier one in home body, but I, I think I think Sandy does it better than him. I'm gonna give Frank. I'm going to give him a C minus. One of the worst pitchers in the in, in, in um, the program, to be honest. Mitch Hanniger. 101-13 versus righties. 117-125 versus lefties. So an absolute obliterator of lefties. Versus righties, he's kind of eh. Just okay. Not great. Not bad. Just eh. 82 fielding, which isn't great. 86 reaction, which is nice to see, though. With a lower speed guy. He's got 61 speed. Nice to see a high reaction. That really helps. Uh, quirks, nothing active. So uh, I, give Mitch, he, I give Mitch him a C minus. Um, low defense. Slow. Decent power. Lefty killer, but you know, no active quirks. Give him a C minus. Bottom, bottom tier, finest player, but still pretty decent. Nate Lowe, arguably um, one of the weakest finest. 103, 102 versus righties. Reverse splits guy. You just in a, in a righty heavy meta. It's just whatever. 114, 101 versus lefties. Okay. Fielding. He plays first and third. High gold. Almost gets the diamond, but he's got high reaction. That matters if you want to play him at third base. Decent speed. Uh, quirks he's got breaking ball hitter which is fun to see but c minus once again relative value way better first baseman way better third baseman doesn't really do particularly anything great kind of slips in the cracks there man so he gets a c minus as well now on to the last bunch of the crew nl west let's hop up could tell marte up for the up for possibly the best card in the entire drop with that swing and other things too. 113, 101 versus righties, 125's max versus lefty. That's insane. This guy's literally a better Chipper Jones because the swing is way better in my opinion. And the versatility, he's a center fielder, right? With 88 fielding, 86 arm, 91 reaction, 94 arm accuracy and 71 speed. He plays second short left and right as well. He's a second baseman with high goal defense, a solid arm and an insane offensive presence. And he's got a great quirk, two great quirks, first pitch hitter and fighter. First pitch hitter literally makes your PCI so much bigger on the first pitch of the, of the at-bat. Super important, super valuable. Cattell Marte with really good defense and the versatility he has with this amazing swing and high contacts versus both, especially versus lefties and insane power versus, I mean, lefties, he's a killer. Righties, he's got enough. Trust me, that one-on-one -on -one power versus righties plays like 125. His card's incredible. Give it a shot. Definitely a must try. A-plus rating for me, easily. CJ Crone, the man who should have been the monthly awards card. Um, because it would have been better than this, to be honest. 107, 116 versus righties. Good. Very good, honestly. Parallel system gets him over 110, 120 versus righties. Max versus lefties, essentially, it feels like at least close to it. Um, 80 fielding, plays first, left, and right. He's going to play first base for you. He's too slow for the outfield, 39 speed. 86 reaction, so mid-goal fielder with the parallel system. Active quirks, none. Lefty killer, right? But Paul Goldschmidt does everything this guy does, but better. That's just plain as simple as how it is. He, and he's got active quirks. CJ, you got done dirty, my man. So he should have been the MA Lightning card. Um, you got pushed all the way back to Rocky's finest. You deserved it too. You definitely deserved it too. Um, it's just, timing, whether it be, you know, I don't think it's anyone's fault. It's just unfortunate. Um, not great. I, I give CJ Chrome a C. For the, uh, he gets a C. Just really rel relative value, just gets him a C. Uh, Max Muncy, 101-121 versus righties, 113-125 versus lefties. So another reverse splits guy. Contact's a little bit low versus righties. Um, so the PCI is going to be kind of tiny, but the power is there versus lefties. He kills it. 95 fielding. This guy's an incredible defender at first base. Um, so he gets to 99, obviously, at some point. But he also plays second and third very, very well. High diamond defender at those positions as well. 60 speed. The 99 reaction is actually super important. That's very nice to see. So at second or third, he'll have you know, 94 reaction and fielding. That's very, very good. Um, great defender. 60 speed. Unfazed quirk. So he's got an active quirk for that because he's really hard to strike out. I find that really interesting. He's um, They made a point to recognize how hard he was to strike out, how much he walked more than he struck out, all this, that, and the third. He's got unfazed, but yet he's got 89 vision. Um, I, they, they mentioned on the stream that you know, they confirmed something that has been my statement for a while, that vision does not mean much of anything. Um, it hardly matters, in fact. They, 
it's just it's supposed to counteract K per nine, but you foul off anything anyways. So I guess they just did it to lower. I don't. I don't think they pay much attention to it to be honest. But either way, Muncy a uh, dense position like first base. Um, he's not an offensive guru like Freddie Freeman is with, with who Freddie's got the contacts um, and good enough defense. I don't know. Muncy's not awful. He plays second and third base too. That helps him out. I'm going to give Muncy a B. Um, he gets a B just for his utility and the really great power, to be honest, and the great defense at three positions. So he gets a B for that. Um, Fernando Tatis Jr. One of the best cards in Diamond Dynasty that we've ever seen. 111, 117 contact, 125 powers. We're talking 96 fielding, 99 arm, 73 arm accuracy, LOL, 96 reaction, 96 speed, 95 steal, 91 base when aggressiveness. He flies. He plays shortstop primary with second, third, left, center, and right as secondaries. The disrespect, the fact that this guy is going to be a mid-diamond defender in the outfield is hilarious to me, but, or even at shortstop too with the defense he played this year, they purposefully tanked arm accuracy knowing it doesn't really affect gameplay as much. Uh, because it's literally user based and vision they specifically said vision don't pay attention to it doesn't matter they know this card's incredibly juiced they had to do something like this because we hadn't had a tatis all year they finally gave us one at the end of the year ish it's juiced incredible card but we're not done yet we're not done just yet quirks oh boy homebody night player first pitch hitter breaking ball hitter rowdy monkey fighter and situational hitter he does not have dead red which is interesting but he's got breaking ball hitter. We know he hammers breaking balls. That's uh, Everyone can hit a fastball, so it's nice to have breaking ball hitter to help you out there too. But wow, he's got very, very good quirks. An incredible card. So well balanced. Parallel 5. He's almost like, like he's, in, he's, he's really above average contacts. Max powers at Parallel 5. One of the best defenders in the game. Um, the, one of the fastest runners in the game. It, he's just an incredible card. He's the must-have, guys. A++. Obviously, you know what I mean? A++. Brandon Crawford. <laughs> it's funny we're ending with this guy. But Brandon Crawford, we love B-Crawl. 123, 110 versus righties. Fantastico. 108, 108 versus left. 105, 108 versus lefties, which is very solid for a Brandon Crawford car. We're talking 110, 113 versus lefties. Whew. 99 fielding at shortstop. 85 arm, 99 reaction, 38 speed. He's a third baseman, guys, if we're being honest. If he's anywhere else, you're bugging. He's a third baseman. He's just too slow to play anywhere else. He's got day player, breaking ball hitter, first pitch hitter, rally monkey, and situational hitter, though. So he gets a vote for me as a very solid bench bat option because of those quirks. Um, I think the quirks plus his fantastic swing and his versatility being able to play second and third base with a high defense and great well-balanced hitting, nets him a B. I like B-Crawl a lot. I give him my love. Bounce back here for him. That was it for me, guys. That was my rating. That was a 40-minute video. I hope you all watch it and enjoy it. It's going to be a long one, but I, I'm catching up. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you enjoy the video. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.